Well, I can only just see you. It's so foggy. But you, at the moment, I, I can't see shit. I, can, I only know where I'm going <laughs> because of your lights. Well, we're doing 20 miles an hour. Well, it's been a while since I've ridden in fog like this. Well, it's not fog, is it? We are literally 2,000 feet up, so we're in the clouds here. Right then, new episode. So, I've left Demo at a uh, grocery store just behind me because this tablet uh, doesn't charge off the cradle, which I knew about before I left for my trip, but I haven't been able to swap it. And John at Thorpe Racing has been very, very good at talking to me. And we've found uh, a reseller, and I've just basically been biding my time until I'm close enough. So I'm about 100 miles from the reseller, and he's already clued up, and we're gonna literally, I'm gonna drop in there, swap over the tablet, and ride back and we're going to stay the night in Gettysburg which is should be a good place to to stay there's a lot of history there and also we've booked a hotel so reasonably cheap with the two of us and it gives us a chance to charge our things and have a bit of a wash and a bit of R&R &R, so we can have a day off the bike and explore so I'm not going to film too much of this because it's basically going to be me hammering down the road challenge is there's a storm coming in at three o'clock it is now 11 so i need to kind of get there and get back before the storm otherwise i might get wet and it's looking quite close already we'll see it's the last errand i've had to do to uh get everything sorted it's what happens when you get your bike late and you don't have time to to ride and test things before you leave which is that's the only reason i'm having this little detour but I'm enjoying it, be good. Right, catch you in a bit. Right, well I don't have my proper mic, so I'm going to shout and it's all wet. But, uh, mission successful. Swapped it over. Last half an hour got covered in rain. Other than that, it's just like British weather. I'm very thankful that we got the hotel. I can now dry off and relax in for the next two nights. You want to play, do you? So after my long ride to swap the tablet over, getting caught up in the rain and the only thing that was keeping me going was the music and keeping my spirits up, I turned up to the nice hotel. I had a good night's sleep and in the morning we popped to do some laundry. While we were in the laundrette waiting for our washing to dry, we were reading the newspaper and inside it is a story about a young bear that was in a blue tarp released on a bear trap on the back of a trailer. And as it happens, that is the exact same bear that we saw being released. So there's the backstory of that bear. And then the following morning, we went over to Thumper Motorcycle Workshop, where I did a little bit more maintenance on my uh, fuel line, just replaced a clip because I didn't like what happened in the field. Damo swapped his front tire around. And then we got chatting to uh, Kevin and Brian, who ended up inviting us to the pub that evening, where they brought us uh, drinks and a meal. I had three ciders that were turned out were 8% each, and it basically put me on my ass. So unfortunately, uh, that meal didn't stay with me that evening, but it was a very lively evening. I was very grateful for their hospitality. And then we got invited for a bit of a tour. So all the bikes you can see up front, uh, by all the bikes in the shop. Kevin and Brian and Jay, they took us all the way around Gettysburg and all the um, historical sites around the area. We also went to a museum that had all World War II vehicles, which Damo was very excited about because he is a bit of an anorak when it comes to Jeeps and was walking around going, oh, that's not the right tyre for that model. <laughs> Got a little bit tired of all the temples. I don't think, I'd... what were the, not temples, what were they? Okay, so what Charlie's trying to say is we went round the battlefield today. Standing in the side. Camera, get my good side. That's my good side. Yeah, so we went round the battlefield today. We saw more monuments than any one country should have. I think there was one monument for every person that was wounded. Uh, so we were all monumented out. Yes. What trying to say, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> uh, there were, yeah, there were more monuments than trees. I'm going to go back to cooking. Yeah, go. Cool. Oh, good. Well, I'm going to have some dinner and... 
we're at the campsite, back on the BDR, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. This is the BDR, but it's a just a cruisy road. And actually, we're quite enjoying it this morning. We, um, we were just saying how the trees and the gravel roads are nice, but after three or four days, it actually gets a bit boring. And we're quite enjoying uh, seeing a bit more of the sort of architecture, if you like, and the, and the people of America. So it's nice to be sat on a road and some of the roads around here, although the speed limit is still ridiculous, they're pretty flowy and pretty nice and the tarmac is beautifully smooth. We've just gone over a really nice uh, big bridge, a cool, gorgeous like uh, river with a big box in it, very picturesque. Now we're just ambling away on the BDR, but actually quite enjoying the fact that it's on the road and not off road, which makes a change. So after a bit of the BDR, we came to the world's busiest campsite. And uh, it wasn't too bad, to be fair. Um, some bright spark decided to clean the toilet at half past eight right when I wanted to shower. And um, yeah, it's all good, but then we met some nice other riders that are riding the BDR. They've just left, said goodbye to us in the morning. Yeah, not a bad campsite, but it's school holidays and the weekend and I think there's 200 odd pitches here and I'd say almost all of them are full the big big rigs and stuff everyone's got a V8 big truck so they were driving it down to where we were by a little river no matter where they were in the campsite they drove them down which we were like at one point there was like eight or nine trucks just parked up and we were like does nobody walk here <laughs> yesterday was I didn't really feel much because the roads were just like this, just the same as what you've seen before. This one, it's a brilliant little road. Straight into it this morning, straight into the twisties. Beautiful. This uh, BDR section a little more interesting. We've had a couple of little river crossings, well, stream crossings really. Nothing too, too, too blah, 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 blah. nothing really to worry about. Wet slightly wet feet, that's about it. But yeah, they've been just a tiny, tiny bit more technical, but it's really nice. And um, just been tweaking right to, ooh, Speaking of my suspension, just felt the front end was being pushed, so I think uh, it's just, you know, fine tuning it now with the weight and luggage on it. See if I can get a bit more feel out of it. So I've gone down two clicks on my rebound, to try and give me more feel. It definitely feels like it's, yeah, it feels really much better. It's amazing how one or two clips on this tractor suspension makes all the difference. I think it's awesome. Ooh. play with jumping and with quite this weight on the back. If it goes wrong, I'm a bit, uh, I'm a bit sheetsed. <laughs> oh, this is so good. You don't get trails like this in the UK that are just, you know, kilometers or miles long with no gates. Um, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Debo. He was just putting uh, some tools away in his pocket. I don't know what he was. He adjusted a bit more of my suspension. And then I left him. I said, oh, I'll go up and fun. 
And then I pulled up at a corner, thought oh, I'll get him record him as he comes round, it'll be a good little spot to do a the B roll. It's been there like five minutes. So I'm now slowly going back down the trail to try and find him. So I have no idea where he is. I uh, I've backtracked all the way back to where I thought we left him and there was also a runner that was running that way and I stopped and I asked him, I said, oh have you, have you seen another bike come come past you again or anything like that? And he's like, no, or have you passed, you know, have you run past the bike? No, you guys passed me and then you just come back. And I was like, right. I'm now carrying on with the trail, hoping to get some signal. Oh, I've got hiccups. That I can then see what his spot track is doing and see actually where he is. I've been scanning with my Senna, like trying to get it to connect as I'm riding back. I'm riding back slowly, you know, all the way back to where I thought I left him. It's quite a way back. Um, well, there was a couple of junctions, but if he's following the trail, he wouldn't have gone down there. It's the first time we've lost each other in the eight days, and we've never really, you know, normally a couple of minutes, as it is max. I say I, I pulled over to uh, to video him coming past. He just never has. So part of me is expecting him to maybe come the other way, maybe he did go the wrong way and then when I went back he passed me, I don't know, just riding along, checking my phone, going slowly, uh, hoping, hoping I can figure out where he is, he made the choice all right. So I just found two guys back there that come past me, so I spun round and raced to catch him up, pulled him over basically, and was like, look, if you're going that way, if you see this guy, he looks like this, then tell him I'm up front uh, and he told me that there's two adventure bike guys at the petrol station just up here so I'm going to go there and also maybe there's some wi-fi or something that I can I can blag and get so that's now the plan I just don't understand how how we've got so separated because um, you're on a trail right I go backwards I'd expect to almost hit him, not lose him completely. So, you know, at this point, I'm not really, he was like, oh, do you know where you're staying tonight? And I was like, I don't really care at this point. I'm just like, where, where is he? Make sure he's all right. I mean, he's a much better rider than me, so I imagine anything's happened, but things catch you out, you never know. Hey, got Wi-Fi at the petrol station, found him on the tracking, he's there. Anyway, um, yeah, so I found him on the tracking. I've just sent him a text message saying I found him and I've got him out on the GPS. So, if I do that, and now I'll go find him. I don't know how he's, he's obviously done a, a different route to me in some form, cut a bit off, done something different because, or maybe he, I don't know what he did, find out, but he's not on that trail, he's not in a ditch, so that's all that matters. Oh, worry of it all. Not the adventure I was up for today. This is amazing. I don't think I would have ridden this without getting, losing him. Not quite sure how he's 10 miles off the track, to find out, but look at this. Whoa. Amazing! Into a hairpin! Gorgeous! Woo! How the actual f is... How the f did you manage to get? 10 miles off the BDR. But I wasn't off the BDR. I don't understand. My BDR route is this. I even went back looking off the edge of the I trail went back. Here. My route is like not where you are. So when we come out to that junction, you turned left. Yeah. I turned right. Right, and then I come all the I way back. Because I was angry with you. I even made a video of me going back looking for you. Yes, so did I. 
So I went, I wasn't angry, I was more worried. Yeah, worried. But I went back, I went all the way back, all the way back to the runner. I couldn't find you. So I then went forwards again and I stopped at the junction. I waited there for a bit. Then I went forward to the next junction. I waited there for a bit. I was trying to get signal. Then I started riding along. Then I found another two bikers. So I spun round, caught them up, pulled them over. And was like, look, if you're going down this road, look out for this guy I described you. They said, oh, there's two guys at a petrol station. I was like, oh, I'll go there. And that's why I got Wi-Fi. And then looked at you and I was like, he's miles away. I'm stuck to your I can tracker, see... And I can see where you've been. So basically what happened was when I got to that junction, I went left, but then my route said back the other way. So I turned round. That's weird. Which brought me out onto this road here, but eight miles that way. And I rode along it for thinking, I'm thinking, why didn't he stop at the junction? Why yeah. Didn't he stop at the junction? And then I flagged down a car and they hadn't seen any bike come past. So I then tracked back, almost back to the runner, but back to the point that we were. And then I'm looking off all the edges. Yeah, as was, as was I. As was I. And anyway, got to that junction. I was stood there and a guy came around the trailer. He brought me to this thing here, which is a, a hot spot. I've hooked on here. And literally, as I've hooked on here, that's when you've sent me the message. Yeah, well, so I literally hooked on, found out where you were, put your coordinates in this. So I had a direct route to you. And then I thought, well, I better text him if you get signal. And I text him and I'm like, stay where you are, I'm coming. And I was like, how will you? I, I think, I'd, yeah, so, well, that's what you did. Because I'm like, my BDR is all the way over there. See, my BDR is this way. On the other, on the flip side of it, the road that I've just come in on, oh. Right, well, I was looking at turning right and going that way to cut this section out. And then three bikes went past me, and one of them stopped. All BDR guys. Yeah, I don't think the BDR guys stopped really, no, apart from those two earlier. They don't. Um, I had to chase the other two, but they weren't doing the BDR. Well, that's so weird that your route went with different to mine. So weird. So how was your suspension? That's why I'm, I'm looking at it going, why are you 10 miles off? You are still 10 miles off. Anyway. How was your suspension? The suspension's not too bad, yeah. I might stop, well. Well, at least you're safe. I'm going to stop the video now. <laughs> oh, so you're videoing that? I'm videoing that, yeah. Oh, well, I was it, concerned, but angry that you hadn't stopped at the junction but now I know why because I'm looking at your track and yours gone a completely different way but at the time when I got to that junction and you weren't there I was like why didn't he wait well I'll keep going I'll keep going anyway is what it is um well that's very odd but anyway is what it is. everyone's safe it's yeah, fine it A little bit.
we've been on the road now about nine days. Uh, the first couple of days was pretty basic in a sense. It was just lovely gravel roads and through forests and trees. I didn't really film that much because I honestly it would just be days and days and days of footage of the same thing. Um, today was a bit of an event, losing Damo, but thankfully we found him and it turns out it was a uh, old GPX file. He basically had a GPX file from October, I think it was updated and I had one for March and they've obviously changed the route. And so he thought he was on the right track. I thought I was on the right track. So we were double backing on our own tracks, but not actually finding each other. So when I did find him 10 miles away, that would be why. I've just put the bear bag up in a tree. It's not that high tonight, but it's the best tree we've got in the area. And so I'm going to end the video here and I'll, uh, yeah, catch you in the next one. Cheers.